The life of this aircraft started as a long-range airliner, designed for transatlantic flights. But after World War II broke out, it became a very successful long-range reconnaissance and anti-shipping aircraft, a real problem for the Allied forces on the Atlantic and the Mediterranean. So let's see how the FW200 Condor transformed from a humble airliner to the scourge of the Atlantic. The story of this aircraft starts in the mid-1930s, when long-range flights were not common and transatlantic flights used flying boats, with several stops. The flying boat was a necessity, as most aircraft at that time lacked the range to make the flight without stops, and there were no large airfields on the way crossing the Atlantic, so an aircraft capable of landing near any island was the obvious choice. In early 1936, Kurt Tank, the lead designer at Focke Wolf, who later was involved in many successful projects, like the FW195 airplane, presented his idea to the board of the German Lufthansa to develop a long-range, modern airliner, which can fly to New York without any stops. Lufthansa was interested, and in June 1936 issued specifications to build the aircraft. The design was ambitious for the time, a big four-engined all-metal monoplane, with a large wingspan to be able to cruise at high altitude, at around 3000 meters, or 10,000 feet. The design of the aircraft advanced well, and the first prototype, powered by four American Pratt & Whitney Hornet engines, made its maiden flight just a bit more than a year later, in July 1937. The second and third prototypes followed right after, and these examples used 720 horsepower BMW engines, and the third aircraft became Adolf Hitler's personal transport, after some modifications. The aircraft also featured a rather unusual landing gear design, which retracted forwards into the engine nacelles. This design was chosen as in case of a malfunction, the slipstream could help opening the gear before landing. The first three prototypes were followed by another three, before the first small batch of the A0 production aircrafts. The original V1 prototype, renamed FW200S1, performed several record-breaking flights as a civil airliner. It flew from Berlin to New York in a non-stop flight in August 1938, making the trip in 24 hours 36 minutes. Three months later in November, it flew to Tokyo in 42 hours with a few stops. This flight caught the attention of the Japanese airline Dai Nippon and also the Imperial Japanese Navy. Sadly, the aircraft was lost in an accident on the return flight. But on the approach to Manila, the fuel supply to the engines was cut off, and the pilot had no choice but to ditch the aircraft in the bay. Luckily no one was hurt in the incident, and though later the aircraft was recovered, it was damaged beyond repair. Despite the accident, the flight to Japan was the first step for this plane to get into military service, as the Japanese Imperial Navy wanted to order one as a long-range maritime reconnaissance aircraft. This led to the development of the V-10 version, an armed long-range reconnaissance variant of the airliner. This variant featured increased fuel capacity and three 7.92mm machine guns, one in a dorsal turret and two in the gondola under the fuselage. This aircraft, however, never made it to Japan, as the war broke out in Europe. When the Luftwaffe need for a long-range reconnaissance aircraft emerged, they had to realize that none of the German planes designed for long-range operations will be available anytime soon. The Heinkel HG-177 was well behind schedule and was plagued with problems. So the FW-200 came in the picture, as it was already in production, had the required range, and the V-10 version was already modified for long-range reconnaissance, following the Japanese order. The man who played a big role in getting the Condor in military service was Hauptmann Edgar Peterson, who commanded a Luftwaffe flight school near Hanover, and had his eye on the FW-200, as the only long-range alternative available in numbers. These events led to the development of the FW-200C variant. To be able to carry the increased weight coming with the military modifications, the aircraft had to be modified, its airframe strengthened, and it received dual wheels on the undercarriage. Ten of the pre-production FW-200C0 variants were delivered to the Luftwaffe in September 1939. Four of these were transport variants, and the remaining six were armed versions. This pre-production run was quickly followed by other upgraded variants, so let's take a look at those. 
The following C1 variant received increased armament with a 20mm cannon in the front and capability to carry 1000 kg of bombs. However, the added weaponry, fuel load and other equipment put a lot of stress on the frame of the aircraft, which was not designed for this and quite a few early variants simply broke in half on landing. Despite various reinforcements and redesigns, this problem followed the FW200 during its service. As initially starting its life as an airliner, it was not designed for high G-load maneuvers, especially while carrying a lot of added weight. The C2 variant was basically the same as the C1, with minor modifications to the engine nacelles and bomb racks. But the following C3 version brought a redesign and structural reinforcements to fix the problems. But despite the efforts, the weakness of the airframe was never fully addressed. This variant also featured more powerful 1200 horsepower Bremo engines and had several sub-variants featuring different dorsal turret types and weaponry. The C4 variant introduced the use of air-to-surface search radar. Though this increased the effectiveness of finding targets, the added weight and drag made this version dangerously slow. Its maximum speed was 330 km an hour at cruise altitude and just 280 km an hour at sea level. But by the time this variant entered service, the Condors, instead of attacking ships themselves, mainly just directed submarines to the targets. The C6 and C8 variants were modified to be able to carry search radars and the handshell HS 293 anti ship guided missiles. The Condor was a big aircraft, at 23.45 meters long, with a wingspan of 32.85 meters, it was bigger than a B-17 bomber. It had an empty weight of 17,000 kg and a maximum weight of 22,714 kg. It was powered by four Bremo 323 engines, developing 1,200 horsepower each. The aircraft had a maximum speed of 380 km an hour and a cruise speed of 335 km an hour. It had an impressive range of 3,560 km and a service ceiling of 6,000 meters. Its defensive armament consisted of four 7.92 mm machine guns in various positions, one 30 mm machine gun in the rear dorsal turret, and a 20 mm cannon at the front of the gondola. It could carry 1,000 kg of bombs internally, or up to 5,400 kg externally. Following the first deliveries of the type at the end of 1939, Kamgeshwa 40 was established in April 1940 under the command of Hauptmann Edgar Peterson, and the Condors see their first action during the invasion of Norway. Their time to shine came not much later, in mid-1940, after the Battle of France, when they started to fly missions from Bordeaux, scouting the Bay of Biscay up to Ireland and up to the north to Norway. Around this time, the newer C-1 version started to arrive. This version had a bigger bomb load, but it was carefully distributed to wrecks under the wings to avoid overstressing the airframe. Nonetheless, accidents still happened from time to time because of the structural weakness of the aircraft. This was their golden time, and when they earned the name Scourge of the Atlantic, as just in two months after June, they claimed 90,000 tons of shipping sunk. And by February 1941, this number grew to an estimated 360,000 tons. In August 1940, though they were not designed for it, these planes were used in conventional bombing role, when they participated in some night bombing raids over the Liverpool area. But they mostly showed their strength in anti-shipping role, and especially when working together with the German submarines. In October 1940, a Condor managed to disable the ocean liner Empress of Britain, and the crippled ship was sunk by U-38 not long after. These attacks were not without danger though, as the FW-200 was only equipped with a very crude bomb site, so the usual tactic was to bomb from a very low altitude and strafe the ships with their machine guns. But their rule didn't last long, as although slowly, but the Allies started to deploy countermeasures against these attacks. First they started to arm the merchant ships with defensive guns, and though these were not the most effective weapons, even these could be dangerous to the Condors, considering they had no defensive armor plating and they were not able to perform swift evasive maneuvers without risking the disintegration of the aircraft. 
Taken a step further, the Allies introduced the so-called camp ships in the summer of 1941, which as the name suggests were equipped with a catapult and could launch a hurricane fighter plane if needed. The first loss of a Condor to one of these ship launch fighters happened in August, proving the effectiveness of these tactics. Around this time the next C2 variant appeared, but only after 8 units built the manufacturing swapped to the C3 variant, which had its airframe reinforced and introduced more powerful engines and an increased bomb load. By mid-1941 the appearance of Allied escort carriers in the convoys also posed a real danger to the Condors. In December they lost several airplanes to Grumman Martlets flying from Major Masoda City during an attack on a convoy in the Mediterranean. Because of the Allied defensive efforts, the Condor crews were instructed to avoid combat as possible, and their main task was to guide the U-boats to the target. They shadowed the Allied ships using their long range and transmitted a direction finding signal for the submarines. Air attacks were only made against soft, defenseless targets. Early 1942 saw the introduction of the C-4 version with the air-to-surface vessel radar to help the Condors find targets. In early 1943, 18 of the Condors were sent to the Western Front to help supply the encircled 6th Army at Stalingrad. They flew from Stalino and completed 41 sorties before Stalingrad was lost. Nine of them were shot down during this time and the remaining aircraft was later sent back to KG-40 at Bordeaux. The FW-200 losses were still raising, thanks to the Allied defensive operations and the crews were now instructed to avoid attacks under 9000 feet to avoid anti-aircraft fire, though from this altitude the bombs usually miss the targets. During this year the C6 and C8 variants were tested to use the handshell HS-293 anti-ship missiles, and some of the Condors were tested for air launch V1 rockets as well. They started using the new anti-ship missiles, but their success rate was very low, and the FW-200 as long-range reconnaissance aircraft was slowly replaced by the Junkers Ju-290 and the Heinkel HG-177 bombers. By early 1944 the Germans stopped the production of the FW-200 Condor. The maritime missions were drastically reduced because of lack of fuel and Allied air superiority and after the Normandy landings, the loss of bases in France made the flights over the Atlantic impossible. The Condor stayed in service until the end of the war, but they were relegated back to the transport role. These elegant looking planes were just modified from a civilian aircraft, but they were very effective in the anti-shipping role despite all their faults. Though their rule over the Atlantic convoys didn't last long, but long enough to earn them a place between the most interesting World War II aircrafts. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, subscribe to my channel, and in the comments let me know if there's any interesting events or vehicles you'd like to see.